Hey, what's up? This is Victor from Dune, uh, and you're listening to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience. Metal Teddy Bear Experience has begun. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. We got my boy, Jesse. How are you doing today? Yo, how's it going? And we have a very special guest today. We have Victor of Dune. What's up, man? How are you doing today? Good, man. Good, good, good. Thanks for having me. Dude, the, the pleasure's all ours. Um, I, got, I saw your performance on Slay at Home Fest, Metal Injection Slay at Home Fest. And I was like, I got to talk to these guys. You guys did an awesome job on there. And you guys have like the best riffs. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Rip City. <laughs> Dude, That's... yeah. Like Jesse always says Rip City. And uh, just listening to the tracks on there, I was like, oh my God. And your Omega EP and stuff like that. I was like, you guys just have like, it's like you have like a whole vault of stuff and you're just like, all right, keep them coming. Keep them coming for every song. Well, yeah, for now, um, I'm, I'm glad you dig it. But yeah, the, um, I'm the guitarist of the band, one of the two guitarists of the band. So we do. Uh, we do like to keep it like playful, I guess. And, uh, you know, I, I find riff like bands with like tons of riff kind of playful. It's fun to play. And then uh, uh, without going overindulgent, you know, uh, but yeah, it's fun. Uh, I like I like riffs. This is what I've been listening to, you know, uh, as, as I was growing up. And usually the stuff that resonates with me on the guitars has been really like riff like and they can be guitar, they can be bass, they can be synth, they can be whatever. But, you know, as I, I usually uh, uh, connect well with like you know, heavy riff bands usually. Definitely, dude. Especially like when you have like an awesome riff and you're like, oh, I'm digging this right now. But then there's another one right there. It just keeps <laughs> you entertained throughout the whole song. You're like, all right, what are they going to hit us with next? And like you, you keep doing that. And your songs are fairly long. I think on the EP, each track was like seven and ten minutes, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's we, we do write big songs, yeah. But like that's what I'm saying. Like those songs don't seem that long because you're keeping us entertained the whole time. And you spoke about influences, like that's what you were used to. So what kind of got you into this type of music? What are some main influences for you? Uh, well, I guess I got uh, I got into metal in general uh, from uh, skateboard. Uh, so I've skated for years. Uh, I still skate when I go back to France and see my friends. And in Scotland, the weather is, is pretty shit. So, sorry, it's pretty bad. There you go. <laughs> Cannot wash my tongue. <laughs> uh, no, the weather is pretty bad here. Uh, so I don't skate as much, but anyway, I start getting into like, you know, I used to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater, you know, and you had like uh, Motorhead, you had like all these bands oh. and uh, I, I got into metal with Motorhead and uh, and then I got into a study, you know, it, it kind of was a Pandor Pandora's box kind of thing and you start going into Metallica and then you start going into like tons of tons of different stuff. But I guess I was playing like, uh, that was like, 15 years ago kind of thing but uh i start i start playing guitar and i start learning this kind of classic uh, uh you know thrash metal and metal songs um and then start going into like a heavier me like heavy metal in general but at some point uh like about 10 years ago i start going into like really really going into uh like baroness mastodon neurosis uh, all this kind of stuff and that's you know that kind of music that really kind of uh, made me as a as a guitarist because like the stuff I used to play uh, on the guitar used to be like I would be like ah I need this this needs to be fast and then it needs to have a solo and it needs to be like shreddy and stuff like that and and this band they kind of uh, taught me that plus the experience of playing you know in 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 bands and with other guitarists and stuff that you know it's it's all about it's not it's not about your performance and stuff it's just about the the riffs the songs and 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 all these kind of things and and the kind of emotions you are bringing to the table uh, so yeah man the. This, this is how I really, really got uh, into uh, and wanted to start this project uh, with the boys, um, uh, which was Dune, essentially. Well, it's funny wow. that you mentioned Mastodon Damn. because uh, there's one riff. I forgot the song, but it's one of your newer ones where it, it totally sounds like a darker, sludgier Mastodon riff. And I was like, this is sick right now that you guys are throwing that twist on. But Jess, you want to say something? I was about to say, yeah. I was like, all the bands that you said make sense. It's like, goddamn. It's like, also, to get into thrash, like just your mechanics probably skyrocketed because it's just all so fast. You got to be really economic with your playing. And then when you take that to like 
maybe more quote unquote musical like riffs or fucking like you just could do everything after getting into thrash right when you were learning like all the motorhead metallica stuff because it's all so fast yeah yeah it's like it's like that kind of you know right hand kind of techniques and yeah. stuff like that but like uh, um I, I played with some of the guys as well who play like you know death metal and black metal stuff uh our guitarist used to play in a in a grindcore band so those guys the way they play they they really you know they dig they really dig in uh when yeah. when they play and it's it makes uh the attacks you have and these kind of things it's like something we've really brought into uh, uh into our uh, into our sound in general and uh whether we are doing stuff that can be sometimes like really really melodic um when we go for it, we go for it, you know? <laughs> Get after it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are about to put out a brand new record, uh, Edtimin Enka, March 19th via Metal Blade Records. Um, and I heard this one's actually a prequel to your previous album, Asheron. Uh, sorry, what was what did you say about the comparison between the two albums? Uh, it's a prequel, right? It's a, it's a predecessor? I, uh, indeed, the story, uh, I don't know where you got that from, but yes, it is, uh, it is indeed... Um, Obviously, like the, the way we create, some people get a bit confused because we use the, the, the band name, you know, Dune, uh, which is obviously a, a reference to the, the, the book by Frank Herbert mm -hmm. and the universe he created. That said, we don't really, uh, we don't, it's, it's not like we use the universe to create our story. So the whole, each album have concepts, which we kind of make up based on like, you know, um, like so many different things we've been reading, so many different things we've been watching. Uh, um, you know, we, we kind of take like science fiction and like literature in general, fantastic literature in general, as like a, um, a source of uh, things where we can get inspiration from. Um, because obviously, I was just telling you about these are the bands that really inspired me and stuff. But I do feel like, especially with this album, we kind of had a sto we had a story in mind and we had like a concept for this album, and we were like, you know what, we're gonna develop this concept before we actually finish writing this album, which we did. Before we enter the studio, the artwork was finished. Uh, the whole concept of the story was finished. The lyrics were undone, but we know we knew the the kind of narratives, and it really kind of uh, uh, helped us getting inspired and and finding new things to put into the music. And uh, and so when we ent entered the studio, our producer went like that. It's a bit. Uh, uh, over the top, but we, he was like, oh, just print some stuff and uh, put, put them in the studio and just try to really, like, you know, immerse yourself in that. So th there's a lot of creative moments that happened in the studio and even in the writing phase uh, that were inspired by the by the concept itself and the, the, the art and the, the kind of overall product uh, that we wanted to uh, to offer to people, which was like the vinyl, the story, the concept, the, the music, and trying to make this big piece of uh, cohesive uh, music and art, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. To come back to your question, so yeah, I completely uh, digress there. Um, <laughs> no, it's all good. To to come back to your uh, question, so it is a prequel. Uh, it's meant to be like the this civilization that left this planet before essentially uh, 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 draining it uh, dry, uh, and then they end up going into another uh, project of them. Essentially, they, they expand, but they don't really expand. They just end up going into living on this planet, discovering this new technology that helps them uh, achieve like eternal life. So it really opens up a horizon for them to do other things. And then this is about what happened when they discover this technology and how it affects their society uh, and how this technology is used. And, you know, so the, the, this album was outside the story. The thematics uh, were quite different from Asheron because Asheron was a much more uh, environment uh, kind of uh, focused thematic. Um, yeah, okay. And this one was more uh, was more focused on like uh, the relation between uh, each other. So it's like really a society thing, essentially, and how uh, you've got this society and then you've got all these people living in this society and they feel like they have to uh, uh, oblige uh, with the different rules that they put in place and all these kind of things. But then in the album at some other moment, you've got people looking at the society from the from the exterior as well, you know, so it's just how we uh, we we put the uh, album concept together, uh, which was meant, you know, obviously what, what, what passing message is, it's, it's not like, uh, or like mega political and stuff, but obviously we're, we're trying to make things something that has a bit of, uh, um, uh, you know, not just talking about like uh, some cool universe, we kind of wanted to have like, you know, like, like every good sci-fi book and yeah. every kind of good sci-fi movie, you kind of want to have something that has a bit of, uh, trying to tell you something, you know? Yeah. It's relatable to life. Like yeah, exactly. Life. exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
And does it when you go into writing for something like a concept record and stuff like that, um, is it sometimes harder because you're like, oh, th this is the concept we want and we have to write music for this. Is it sometimes hard to do that in the studio? Not really, because I think if anything, uh, it kind of gives, gives you a direction. So uh, sometimes to time when you write music and stuff, especially with Asher, and I felt like that with Asher on a bit. Um, obviously, we were a younger band as well, but when we were writing Asher, we didn't really have a concept. So we uh, we entered the studio and we didn't really have a concept, and then we start writing the lyrics and stuff. And um, when that happened, we kind of I, I feel like, and I love Asher, but I feel like Asher is maybe not as uh, um, uh, consistent uh, uh, artistically than Etemen. And I find Etemen Ainka has this uh, thing where I'm like, this is coherent. It really feels coherent, and I think that helped with that. Um, he also gave me tons of ideas on like, uh, he gave us tons of ideas, but uh, me particularly with the synths, because I started playing synths on this album and uh, um, I was like, ah, oh, you know what, this makes me feel like we need something that is like super uh, uh, cinematic. And so we, we put like weighing up the heart in it, which was like purely synths and like, uh, like really uh, don't tune guitar that sounded like nothing like guitar, just like heavy things. And then we've done another one, which was the intro of uh, uh, SI-14, which is just like a pure synth, nearly electronic kind of thing. And, uh, and and I dig it. And that, that you know, the environment and this kind of uh, story we, we put in the back of our head, it really helped uh, uh, putting that on the table, you know? This seems like it's a very visual, you know, project. Is this like, if you got like, like budget with standing, like, is this be like, would you want to create like a music video for each song? Basically would this, cause it sounds like these kind of would be albums. Like it, even if they were like animated or something, it'd be like, this is kind of like, cause their story, you know, it's a through line. Would that uh, be something you, if you were able to do, would you want to do? Yeah. Money would be the issue and time, yeah. obviously, cause we uh, like, we've done this uh, music video for SI-14 with um, a bunch of our friends uh, between Paris and, uh, and uh, Scotland. And uh, uh, we're like, we're extremely picky about what we like and what we don't yeah. like. So um, this, these things take quite a time. And obviously here, because you have to work with other artists as well, you, you need to give a place for the artists to express themselves. So this will be on top of being financially uh, yeah. expensive. It'll be extremely draining in terms of time. However, um, we, We've been talking about it with Dan already, the, the other guitarist with who uh, we, we write the, the lyrics and vocals together. So we've been talking about, about these kind of things because we were like, you know, one day if we start, we're going to keep writing music, you know, but if we keep going and create, create this universe that we are, uh, uh, we've been creating since the beginning of the band, well, maybe it'll be cool to uh, uh, offer some kind of uh, format where we can like either either if it's like a, a, a illustrated novel kind of thing these kind of things would like or, or, a, or a comic book you know whatever that would be super sweet and yeah and obviously if you've got money well turn it into some <laughs> small anime that'll be awesome but yeah that, man for sure i, I love yeah. that kind of stuff yeah because listening to that it's like obviously sadly money but like when you see like certain like especially like pop artists will release like an album and they'll like a music video for each which coming from metal like i never paid attention really to like pop artists and their kind of domain but i was like they got a music video for each song like i was yeah. just like <laughs> and i'm like god damn like, i forgot what was that beyonce album that came out like five years or six years ago i was like yeah it came out with each song having a music video i was like that's a good album i think you're talking about lemonade yeah, the, yeah, that that's was a, it. It's a kick-ass album. Yeah, and uh, production is insane. It's well, yeah, it's it's nutty, but it's just like to me, like I guess because I you know I listen to it as it comes. I don't really look for it, but then when you hear that, I'm like, wow, in metal, it's just so uncommon. Like, like bigger bands, they might put a bunch of singles out and music videos, but then once it comes out, it's like I've never heard of a metal band that really put out every single band, every single song's a music video. And it sounds uh, like what you were talking about. It would be like that'd be prime. I have to say, and it's not too. Uh, I, I do. I do think that a lot of music video out there are a bit like, a, um, not my cup of tea. Like they're just. I, I feel people are playing it a, a bit safe when it comes to these kind of things. And um, yeah, performance does, videos. They're just performing. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah. I mean that's that's fine, but I don't really understand them when you're not doing something live. So we did the ta towers, which is one of the uh, the latest single we we just did, and we were like. Because we wanted just to do a live sessions, that makes sense to see us play. But I don't really understand it when you are doing like a, you know, I mean, for SI14, we've got 
bits and bobs of us playing, but that was more to give dynamic to the to the music video. Yeah. But the the, the main focus was something else on us. I don't really understand why it's just the band playing. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I think it, I think it's like a holdover from like the MTV days and stuff, like yeah. back in the day. Because yeah. like yeah. you never saw the band unless you saw them in a music video. Yeah. You're and right. now on and now on YouTube or like I could go to like right now. It's like oh, I want to see Victor. Victor, what's up? There you are. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, I yeah, can yeah, just yeah. Google you. Right. It's just like. Before it was like I didn't know who the hell they looked like until it came on VH1 or something when I was like ten. I was like, yeah, oh, so that's it's, what they so look it's like. It's a legacy stuff, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think people just kind of, oh, well, you're supposed to do it, and then like older like record <laughs> and labels and stuff it. will just like, yeah, just release it and then, until a band like takes hold and like, no, we want to do like, want to make it animated, we want to have a story behind it, want to make it funny or that. something. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it is yeah, to have one band in a room and like maybe a couple cameras set up, you know, and then you get that extra promotion for the music video. Because sometimes when a band puts out a single, you're like, okay, I'll listen to it. But then when there's a video, you're like, all right, I'll sit down and watch this. And it's like a second mm-hmm. form yeah. of promotion. Yeah, yeah. I, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, or like Code Orange when they like made an announcement, like they switched the drummer came became was the drummer in the vocals, and then with this new music video from this last album, their first music video, they or second music video, it like showed that he wasn't the drummer anymore. It was like a big show, it was almost like a wrestling reveal. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> like they, I was like, got, okay. they've got their uh, communication uh, together, the guy in Code Orange. Yeah, no, yeah, like the marketing is pretty uh, pretty awesome. I have to say. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. – it's interesting. I appreciate a band that it clearly shows they all agree and have a one message to say, and they're very, like, into it, which is great because it, it hits harder than just some guy tweeting, hey, did you see that show? Isn't it crazy? By the way, buy our new album when you can. Yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> – it's like – no, they're like – it's like cryptic, like, horror movie type. It's like, all right. <laughs> Yeah, their, their yes. last music video was pretty cool. And the, and the live streams they've done were, were kick-ass as well. No, they, 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 they are great. Great band. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, what's something currently that you're listening to, like a band or, you know, what are you currently listening to? Um, I've been listening to a lot of Carpenter Brutes. I don't know if you know that. Oh, yeah, I know them. It's like a French uh, guy uh, who does like uh, uh, really old school, like kind of, sorry, vintage 80s sounding uh, uh, synth, heavy synth. Synth wave so, stuff, yeah. Like... Yeah, yeah, like, but like heavy, like, you know, the kind yeah. of thing that just hammers you a little bit. So I've been listening to uh, him quite a lot because it's uh, I'm I'm really into my synths these days. Uh, like I've been I've been really really digging that kind of thing. So I've been li- listening to that. Then I've been listening to uh, the last two tracks of this album. I'm really excited about uh, the new uh, Genghis Tron. Yeah, dude. Okay. Relapse Records, right? Is yeah, yeah. Relapse Records. So Genghis Tron is like a band I've been fan of. Uh, I discovered them by listening to Converge, and uh, I remember at the end of one Converge album, there is two songs. One of them is with a guy, one of, one of the guys from uh, uh, Neurosis, and then Cruel, Cruel Broom, I think that's what it's, it's called. And then the one after, Red Shed or something like that, is the vocals are, were amazing. I was like, oh, I didn't know the guy sing like that. And then they had like electronic element to it. And actually it was Converge doing a fit with uh, Genghis Tron. And then I started yeah. going into Genghis Tron and it's it's crazy. So th- it, this, this new album is the first one where they have... Uh, uh, a drummer on because normally they were using uh, drum machines yeah um, that's why so right. it, it, it took another like dimension and and it's not uh, any drummer it's a drummer from converge as well oh damn oh damn yeah. okay so there you go good good personal but uh, it's <laughs> cool what they are doing is really cool uh, i i've been digging, digging that and then uh, i've been listening to um dual Lipa, man i've been listening to a lot of dual Lipa recently pop artist okay okay that's that's the same idea. story it's like <laughs> completely 80s but uh, the album is kick-ass so i just i just been listening to that quite That's a bit got a big palette there that's pretty cool yeah really yeah it's like yeah especially because either people even if they don't listen like there's a lot of metal heads that just don't li- like you know the bands will be like i'm sick of metal i listen to it all day it's like but they still listen to like just like rap or something it's like it's kind of cool you're kind of covering synth to like pop to freaking metal it's like and it's, it's nutty damn do you ever get, uh, you know, not tired of, but sometimes a little exhausted from all the metal and stuff? Because, you know, that's what you do. It's kind of like, you know, your job. I mean, you obviously enjoy it and all that. Um, but, like, do you ever get a little tired from it? And you're like, I got to get away from this. got to listen to, like, pop bands or something. Um, I guess, no, I've, I've, I've listened to many different things since forever. Um, 
I guess with with time, I, I feel more comfortable listening to some stuff that's you know when when you're a bit younger, when you're like in a, in like like a teen or in your early twenties, uh, sometimes you kind of care a little bit about what people think of what you're doing, and sometimes you listen to bands. Well, anyway, I found I was doing that. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to bands. I was like, this band is cool, and then uh, actually I didn't like them so much. <laughs> but everyone was saying they were cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and same with pop. Sometimes to time, I will I will be a bit uh, uh, feeling. Uh, Ah, oh, that's pop, and this is this, and this is that. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't be liking it. Uh, but then with time and stuff like that, especially, uh, I, I learn to trust my ear and be like, listen to something, and I'm like, this production here is kick-ass, and it sounds super cool, and I kind of get what the guy is trying to do, and uh, and and not caring about the fact that, for instance, uh, uh, like we you know we're talking about uh, that uh, Beyonce album. She, yeah. she she wrote next to nothing on this. She's just performing, you know, but. Uh, there is like, I think there were like 20 producers on it, like people doing songs at different moments and stuff. And I'm like, well, cool. It's just another way of doing music. Everyone's doing music different ways. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, this one path. So I don't, I don't really get sick of metal. What I get sick sometimes is just uh, trying to listen to new stuff because that's quite, you know, time consuming. And yeah, yeah. Like, you know, sometimes you end up listening to the same stuff. Uh, you come back to the same old stuff. Absolutely. So I, I, I think to, um, the thing is i have to uh we have to listen to new stuff and trying to make sure we are we stay curious about new stuff because if we don't we're just passing some good influence and some good ideas that we could be maybe you know uh, not necessarily uh putting in our music and i don't want i don't want us to be stale you know uh yeah as we go and and even me like sometimes i go to the studio i remember for a while sometimes i go to the to the studio with our drummer and i'm like putting a riff in front of him and he's like mm. I was like that's a bit samey man it's like it's gonna be it's a bit too same as a previous track or this track or or this song's like 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 something we've already done kind of thing so obviously you'll still want to sound like you but at the same time you want to keep progressing and trying to uh to to put new stuff on the table so I find myself going on like something that's great these days end of the year list you know yeah. everyone's doing those yeah. end of the year list and sometimes they do like two top hundred of them so I, I go on a few websites. I've got I've got like uh, one saved on my on my laptop, and I'll, I'll try to go. Especially when I'm like really focusing on writing new music, I'm like, cool. I'm gonna force myself. It's it's like a, it becomes a routine essentially. It's also just like exciting when you just like yeah. when you when you find a even if it's like it is metal, it's like cool. But when you find a new genre, it just opens. It's like you know yeah. every genre is like metal. It's not just pop music. There's there's a tree. There's brands all different pop. There's like rock, jazz, you know, funk, yeah. rap. It's just like, it's like it's it, it, it's cool when you find a new band. You got a whole discography, but when you find like a new genre and you just follow it down the route, like I'm sure when you started listening to like that heavy synth wave stuff, like it was like oh, and you just followed Carpenter Brew and just followed it to other bands. Oh, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's cool. I had the same stuff with trap as well. I went yeah. to a big trap section. I was all right. <laughs> And everyone was like, what this trap is all about? And a friend of mine uh, shared an album and I was like, whoa, that's heavy. And uh, just, just ended up listening to it. Oh, that's one of my favorite things is to find stuff that's heavy that isn't metal. Yeah. yeah. Like, I remember yeah. it was the song that the game made, I think, with, uh, is this, was it El Chapo? Dude, the song's pretty cool. But man, that opening, I'm like, dude, don't be near me. I'm moshing. I don't care what everyone is. I, I don't care. No, it's like it's going down. What is that? <laughs> the the game by uh the game El Chapo game El Chapo I'll check it it's out. like the song is cool but when it begins like if you just got a headset with good bass in it it's like damn the lyrics are whatever but I'm like holy shit this is heavy <laughs> <laughs> like damn and it's just like wow it's cool it's like metal isn't the only thing that's heavy when he's like you got because like like you I didn't really care too much what people said luckily because I, I didn't miss as much music like when I was little, but man, there was like emo, you know, like as a metalhead, you couldn't listen to emo. And my friend like always fucked me when I was little. And I'm not going to lie. There's some emo tracks I bang with and I'm upset that I, I didn't let myself listen to it when I was like in like a freshman. I was like, no, you can't yeah, listen don't to do emo. It. And then now fucking like Fall Out Boy pops on like back in the day. I'm like, yeah, this rips. What was wrong with me? Why did I yeah. give a shit? None of those people even know about music. Who cares? It's like it's that world guilty pleasure about music, but I'm I'm not. No, I'm at the stage. I'm like, no, it's just just pleasure. Just music, absolutely. I don't give a shit if it's a banger. (laughs) I don't care, dude. I like. There's a few like when the bands like he's like, oh, you like them? It's a guilty pleasure. It's like, 
No, I don't care if they make one good song. If a whole discography sucks and there's one banger, it's like that's all right, enough, wor- yeah. worth it. That's most, that's 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 malls and most bands, you know. Yeah, how many? Yeah, how many bands? Like just like make a bunch of good songs, and it's like yeah, that's cool. What about a banger? <laughs> it's just like not many. That's a bad, yeah, dude. That's all awesome. you heard. You heard it here first. Jesse does not give a shit. <laughs> well, it's just like because I did, and I just missed so much. I miss Coheed and Cambria, dude. Because someone said, yeah, they're emo. Dude, they're they're one of my think favorite bands ever now. Emo. Well, I, so, yeah, but I, was a I don't kid. know them. Every like a few people have been telling me about them, but I watched one of their stuff live and I was like, ooh, I was cringing. But <laughs> I heard uh, he's like, he goes into double neck guitars and then he starts putting his double neck guitar behind his back. I was like, yeah, <laughs> the fuck he, out of here. He is, uh, he, is, he is a little bit of a nerd, but when you just like, when you listen to just the material, like on record, I will say I've heard a lot of people say they weren't that good live. When luckily, when I saw them, yeah, they were pretty good. So, I saw them at I, I, I outdoor, just lucky. I don't know. <laughs> I saw them at the outdoor festival for, for Welcome Home. They have this like really iconic pitch harmonic, right? And he messed it up like right, like it came. You knew it was coming, and went, eh! and you're like, oh, like twice it happened. I was like, oh, that yeah. that sucks because it's so like important to the song where everyone knows it. You know? Yeah, it's a non guitarist that scares the shit out of me. The pinch harmonic coming up. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna. I missed it. Fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. I'll I'll try I'll try I'll try them I'll try to go into uh, uh, one album which which album would you uh, recommend? Ah, uh, dude, the problem is I can't say their albums because they have like those crazy ass long titles. Oh, like this, you mean? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, they're way worse. Titles. <laughs> it's like a sentence. It's like a heart lost in space in a box far away from you. It's like what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> <man. laughs> it's like, uh, what is it? I'll, I'll tell you right now. Probably the one with "Welcome Home" on it, right? Well, that album's good, but you know what you might be interested in, too? Because it's pretty kind of crazy. Year of the Black Rainbow. Right, I like that, that one. That was the album I first got into because it's like uh, it had the drummer, the former drummer of Dillinger Escape Plan, Chris Penny. Right. Yeah, that he was on. The, that was the album he was That's on cool. and recorded with. And it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Te- if you're into technical stuff, it's like, what the hell? Like, there's some songs on there. I'm like wow it's like that's a real technical album and it's still really good too it doesn't like give away a lot of their like poppy catchiness that they have mm-hmm. which is pretty cool i recommend i'll i'll, I'll give them a try because i know some some of my friends really really dig them i know they were doing a, mas- a tour with mastodon when mastodon was doing yeah. that, uh, that was, crack the sky yeah. uh tour that yeah was that was the tour i got to see him on i, I never uh, got to see him was mastodon? fantastic yeah Ma- mastodon amazing. Uh, I, said, I remember like some a few people I knew were saying like because I saw Mastodon a lot and people were trying to tell me like oh I saw Mastodon once it's like they weren't that good I was like they're literally a band I rethink because I play drums I rethink as Chris every time we leave a concert I'm like dude we got to practice it's like it's one in the morning it's like we got to practice now after seeing <laughs> them it's like they're too good at what they do <laughs> it's like, it's crazy they're so good indeed there we yeah. go. <laughs> well, just bringing it back to you guys and Dune. You guys put out that Omega EP. Um, so I, one, the the Salt Tower track Omega is going to be featured on the new record, right? Yes. So um, I guess clarify, clarify, clarifying this as well. Um, Omega Sever, well, our album was meant to be released in September, but we we pushed it back because of you know uh, COVID, and um, we were meant to go on tour. You know, tours have been like tours have been pushed pushed and pushed and pushed back all the time rescheduled so we were like ah it sucks we wanted to release some new music we've been sitting on this album for already quite a bit of time so we're like well you know what let's do a, an ep let's re-record the songs that we love from our old days give it like a you know refresh it add the scenes because I, i'm putting scenes on everything now so we just added the scenes and uh um when we we made this we, we wanted to make this little EP of like, you know, we were like, that's 20 minutes of music. We're just re- revealing one song from the new album. Uh, and we don't give too much, but we kind of give like a bit of a, here's, here's a, 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 an appetizer, essentially, of, uh, of what's, yeah, yeah. what's to come. And, uh, and we knew like both of those songs, they weren't meant to be released uh, as single track anyway. So um, it was really for our fans. Uh, we knew it was like, like Omega Severa is, is one of my favorite track on the album, but uh, I know it's it's uh, it's a grower. I think it's the one where you have to give like a, a, a good few lessons. Whether uh, Towers and uh, SI14 are more like uh, in your face kind of thing and a little bit more accessible, I think, uh, and a bit punchier. So I think as, as we thought, we thought, you know, 
it doesn't cost us anything to do this. I think people will dig it. And uh, yeah, I think we were right. I think it's a smart idea you guys put at the EP because I feel like it's an, uh, an extra way for people to get into you, get get hype for the album. Because I, I know me, definitely, I heard that EP. I was like, yo, when's this new album coming out? You know, like I, I want it now. You know, like you're really excited for it. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, no problem. Uh, so is there a track that you guys are um, – I, I like asking this question. It's was there a track on the record that almost did not make the final track listing? Um, the last song of the album ended up in a form that was quite different than what we initially planned. So I guess to a degree, we we don't really throw away songs because there's always something we dig into them. We just walk them until we're happy with them. Um, How long does that take? <sighs> A while uh, the the writing <laughs> takes ages um but that said um the way usually we work is a drummer and i work on the structure um and our basis at the time as well was really involved into that but we we, we really essentially work on like here's some riffs the drummer and me would just end up uh, spending some time like really making making sure this is pretty cool and we got a song then we start opening that up to the rest of the band as like you know south what do you think about this? We do, we do a demo, but the demo are like on these albums were really li limited. We just did a drum and a, and a couple of guitars demo and that was it. Um, and then we do a lot of stuff in the studio. So we do a lot of stuff on the fly. Uh, it'll be like, and it's cool because you can, it kind of keeps you on your toe uh, and it could be a bit better in terms of time management and stuff like that. But uh, I consider that uh, we could have spent that, it would have been money we would have spent in pre-production anyway with our, with our producer. So it didn't matter too much. So we ended up like doing lots of stuff on the fly and making like creative decision on the day. And, uh, and, and that worked for us quite well. Um, I, I enjoyed that actually. I think that was really cool because it kind of makes like, you know, you, you, you can change stuff until the last minute kind of things because you're like, this makes, this feels right. Or actually I need to extend this section because uh, these new things I, I got on the guitar or whatever, I'm starting hearing something new here. And, and same with our producer is really involved. So he goes to us and he's like, uh, hey, you know, maybe you should do this or maybe you should change that. And maybe, and so the, the songs keep on evolving in the studio. So uh, yeah, like the, the structure itself is usually like the, the beginning of the work, like the, 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 the initial creative um, uh, start of the music, writing the, 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 the riffs and, and structuring it more importantly. That's the hardest part. Then after that, it's just all fun, man. Oh, okay. Well, uh, see... That's really cool because you get to take all this time and really get intricate with all the riffs and all the writing styles. Do, do you ever get to that moment where you're like, um, it's hard to capture the moment in a way? Like, like I'm assuming from the when, when you start the writing process to the end piece, you kind of have like a whole different mindset, right? Yeah, of course. Sometimes it, and I used to have like a, to get into my head, get into my own head and be like, oh, this is all the song's going to be and, and not be as flexible with how things could change. Uh, but we've learned about it. Like we were really critical on each other. So sometimes the practice can be a bit tough because, you know, we tell each other like, no, that's, that's bullshit. Or, you know, that's, that's cool, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you kind of have to uh, keep your, you, keep, you have to keep your ego, ego in check. You cannot really throw a tantrum because like, ah, that's my song. It's, it's, it doesn't really work like that. You end up being more, right, what do we all think about it? That, that part kind of sucks, no? Well, right, cool, well, let's work on it. And um, uh, that's collective. why we don't throw songs away because we don't get to that point where we want to throw them away, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah. I guess I guess that's that's how we end up uh, uh, working for us uh, so far. So we have a, a new segment on the show. It's called <laughs> Get to Know the Band, and this time we're getting to know Dune. So we ask a bunch of questions about the band members and, like, Who's the funny guy? Who's the the complainer and all that stuff? So starting out, um, who's the band member that needs the most alone time? Oh, um, I guess I'll be your uh, that'll be your uh, guitarist Dan, because uh, he but he's fine. He just ends up sleeping everywhere every time we go on tour. He just sleeps in the van, man. <laughs> you just don't hear about him. He just sleeps somewhere. So. Uh, yeah. So that that probably would be him, but he just doesn't struggle with it. He just managed to uh, to do it any way he wants. <laughs> that was actually another question of ours. Like, who's the guy who's most likely sleeping? Because uh, our boy I'm Jesse the over here, every time we hang out, he's always. We, as soon as we look over to the chair, Jesse's out. Yeah, sleep, dude. 
<laughs> gotta take it when you can get it. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. I can't. I, man, I struggle to sleep most nights. So, yeah, I don't well, you might. You might just be a healthy person. See, I also <laughs> struggle, but I also struggle to sleep most nights for some reason. Maybe because of my hectic schedule of randomly sleeping throughout the day. And I'm like, 3 p.m. <laughs> perfect. Get get two hours, and then oh, nine. Laughs, man. Yeah, and then 9 p.m. comes. I'm like, power nap. Fuck, I can't sleep. And then 5 a.m. comes. I'm like, I'm wide awake. <laughs> this is rough. <laughs> And then um, the morning light comes. I just hiss at it like a vampire. But I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So who's the who's the funny guy on tour? Who's the comedian? Uh, that'll be Dudley. I'll run now. Yeah, there we go. Is, is like he uh, throw like uh, pranks or anything, or he's just very witty? Uh, he's very witty. Uh, he's just he's a character. Like um, he's probably one of my best friends. We've been uh, hanging out in the band for like a long time, but he's a. Uh, He's a, he's a funny guy. Like he's just so high on energy. It's mental. Absolutely crazy. Go. The life of the party, you would say. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've partied uh, in our times, but these days a little bit less. We don't we don't uh, party as much as we used to. Of course. Well, yeah. Nowadays you got to be a little more safe. I get you. Um, uh, no, 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 not even. I think we're just uh, uh, you know when you go on tour and you drink every night. At some point, you start realizing you're like, it's too much. Yeah. That's not good for me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, every and single if, day, if, you know. We like having good tours and enjoying time, so so we don't have, we don't booze as much as we used to. I like enjoying my dream, but then there's a certain point where I drink so much and I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> just like I wake up and I'm like, why? That's the only problem with drinking. There's so many times I've woken up like after I'm like that was a great time, and I wake up I'm like, fuck my life. Like, is this really worth it? Luckily, I haven't stopped, but <laughs> I think the thing that's, that's um, dangerous right now, I, I forgot what it's called, but apparently it's like a pill that will help with hangovers. So people can drink as much as they want. They can take one or two of the pill and you basically won't have a hangover the next day. And I heard it's pretty bad because people are drinking too much now because they think they can get, you know, get rid of it the next day or get away from having a hangover and stuff like that. I was reading about that <laughs> online. I was like, that's interesting. It's a worse hangover. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> they just keep going until they break the ceiling. But is it is this is this cocaine you're talking about? Possibly. <laughs> it might just yeah, be right? cocaine. <laughs> yeah, right. That's cocaine that's that's capsule cocaine. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Um all right. <laughs> Imagine. What's the ingredients? <laughs> I'm going to break it to you. It's cocaine. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just cocaine. There's no way around it. Uh, that's what I <laughs> You um, clap these leaves and you put them in your drink. What are they? Uh, the coca cocaine leaf. <laughs> it's just cocaine. <laughs> All right, who's the the guy who complains the most on tour? Uh, that'll probably be me, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to uh, to tour manage, so I tend to organize like you know, oh, tell, I know where we have to go, I know where we have to be, what time and stuff like that. So yeah, I end yeah. up bitching at everyone because uh, one is still sleeping or we're missing one guy, and I'm like, oh, we're late for this. So yeah, I, I end up <laughs> uh, I end up mooning a bit. Okay. Oh sweet. damn. Yeah, I mean, sorry, do you manage the band too or just you just manage the band on tour no so we we manage ourselves like we really much uh um independent in the way we do things uh and we all have all like uh uh our hats if you know what i mean so uh yeah. the 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 guitarist uh dan is uh he's he's very good he's a he's a web designer um and he does uh illustration and stuff like that so Oh, uh, so he, he will put like all like the the imagery and stuff and make sure like it's all formatted so it can be sent to our to our, our label and uh, make sure like uh, the the website is you know looking as good as it could be and uh, he does also the video editing recently he's been doing the video video editing for us so um, he's more he's the more technical kind of computer uh, guy yeah um, Dudley is uh, like usually he's been. Uh, taking care of like driving uh, when we have in sharing it with another person and then he'll be like uh, the one taking care of like he's good at dealing with shit so when things are like uh, like someone doesn't pay us the so right money they'll make sure we get paid you just <laughs> said yeah. Dudley after yeah they don't, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's they don't that's complain no ass. more when Dudley comes <laughs> just, just, just go and get the money man and uh, uh, and I tend to do like the more uh, admin stuff so you know lazing with people and just uh uh, being in touch with the label and uh, you know try to organize stuff, uh, organizing tour. And I like I, obviously you know by, by, recognized by the accent that I'm uh, from France, uh, so I, I know people in Europe. Uh, my my girlfriend is Greek. Uh, we've got tons of friends all over Europe, so, so uh, cool. it help it helps with tours. Um, you know, so that that's I do the more uh, kind of uh, this kind of uh, business side of things. 
I think that's what you need nowadays for like a successful band. You gotta, you gotta have members that do multiple things. Like you said, wear multiple hats. For sure. Uh, you have, you have to share the work, you know, uh, to, to, yeah. to a degree. And, uh, and, and more importantly, I think you see so many bands are like uh, uh, very talented and, and got some great albums. They, they cannot get their stuff together. All right. You know, they, 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 the organization is pretty bad. And then you just end up uh, uh, falling apart because of the wrong reasons. Uh, so, at least we, we want we want to do things uh, on ways and just have fun doing it. So we have to, you know, being uh, half serious about how we are doing things essentially. Yeah, it's what, it's what you want though. It's just like yeah. that sounds that sounds like a dream. Like a mad, like when you hear bands are just as all in house, where I'm like, damn, all right, like. Are like really? It's just like they just all do it. Like in my head, I would like panic thinking about everything. But if you just have a team, you're just like, oh, this is easy. That guy's got it. Or this dude's got it. Well, what 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 ended up happening? So, um, uh, my girlfriend works with a, a management company uh, that takes care of quite a few bands. But uh, you know the Scottish band Mogwai. I've heard of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's like a big. Uh, they're, they're number one. They just released an album. They're number one in the UK this week. So they're pretty chuffed about it. Uh, but they, uh, they are like a post-rock uh, uh, band, one of the first post-rock bands, essentially, from uh, Glasgow. And uh, they started their own label. Uh, so essentially, they are taking care of themselves, but they, they created a team around them. So, yeah. so they don't self-manage. They, they just got yeah. direction, like control over, over their management, which is, uh, which is a little bit different. But thanks to their success and their years of uh, work, uh, they're working with uh, their manager and their and their label, so they do things in their own terms, you know. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of successful band that's what they are doing, um, and and that makes sense. So so obviously, like you know, all the little admin stuff, I, I wouldn't, I'd like not to do it and being able yeah. to focus only on what matters. But you want you want complete control on on that though. You want to to be able to say no, that's 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 not happening. I want to do this this way. Yeah. yeah. It's show. also how you protect the band too. Like yeah. with when people aren't hands on, they're like, yeah, do it. That's how you sign those contracts where it's like 10 years of down the road, big yeah. career. How much money did I make? Not much. <laughs> you, yeah. you signed it all away. I was like, fuck, but I probably should have did more work. <laughs> you could be making money, but hating what you're doing. You yeah. Know? Uh, I, which yeah. which yeah. happens. Uh, like we, we start talking with bands and starting, starting the business as well. We, we know about bands who just end up going into stuff they don't want to do. And it just, takes all the energy away from them you don't want don't want that to happen you just want to be as creative as you can for as long as you can as well uh, and not take that away from because yeah. you're focusing on the on the wrong things you know yeah that because yeah music made fun like music made by people that don't want to make the music sounds like a death sentence like holy yeah. shit it's just like wow this is this is technically good but it sounds like it's dead inside. It's like made by people that don't want to make it. It's like all, all guys who go on stage together and hate each other. You know, you're like, oh, oh yeah. Like those old bands you'll see when they get off and they just don't look at each other. Yeah, they no just like throw their guitars. It's like I've got so many stories of that, right? I used to work uh, I used to work at a festival in France called Hellfest. Oh, oh damn, oh, yeah. yeah. So that Hellfest is literally like uh, an hour away from, from my hometown. So uh, I got a volunteer job to start there and I was doing like artist reception. So my job, because my English was good, every, like not everyone in France has a, a, a half decent uh, English. So they yeah. needed guys to take care of like, and, you know, telling them, oh, these bands, you need to go on this stage at this time, you know, making sure they were happy with everything, essentially. So you, you get to see a little bit of the, of the big, big bands. Like uh, you'll have like, we had like Guns and Roses. We had like those big, big bands. So we don't yeah. really take care of them, but we see what happens. And I saw, um, you know, the band Scorpion. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Scorpion arrive on stage and all they, and they fucking hate each other. Sorry, pardon my uh, swearing. Okay. They really don't like each other. So they all arrive on stage at different time. They, they don't speak to each other. And then they go on stage and, and then you see them on stage and they're like hugging each other. Like, you know, hey, it's my pal. And, stuff <laughs> and you're like, that's that's not true. I saw you. You weren't doing that backstage at all. You don't I'm talk lying. to each other. Oh my God. I'm bad. not gonna lie. Damn, that is a perfect band of because I'm like, I'm not surprised. You bring up yeah. Scorpion, I'm like, yeah, makes sense. They just when you do it so long, it's like especially those bands that were literally doing it when it was a different world. Like so Scorp- successful. Yeah, like yeah, it's just like so I can't successful. imagine, like, you're not the same people. There's no fucking nah. way. You just can't be. <laughs> and back in the eighties as well, you, you've got yeah. to put back in uh, in that that back in the eighties, everyone was like cocaine was just starting and stuff like that. Those guys were like cooked out their nuts, like completely 
Oh yeah. Like, yeah. The, the tours were must have been different. So you, you cannot go on tour with like uh, five individuals and having that happening every night without having people ha like you know having some bad stories and bad blood happening. Wow, that yeah, that's <laughs> it's just nutty when you especially when you got the money where you literally can separate. Like it's hard to do that in a van, right? You have yeah, to kind of like money. each other. Yeah. If yeah. not, it's like but if you got buses where you're like, fuck you, I'm going to my own bus with my <laughs> family. It's like, all right, Ron, see you later, dude. <laughs> it's just like I, I think I think for us, uh well, it's not like uh, when we when we come back from tour, we don't see each other for a good two weeks still. But because you know, you've just been on each other for like uh, uh whatever days your tour was. But um so I understand that. But at the same time, like even when we're having a shit day, we always end up having some laugh and stuff, you know? Yeah. It's good, it's good, it's How long nice. do you guys usually tour for? Like what's the longest tour you guys go on? Uh, we've done uh, 25 shows in Europe. Um, that was what? Uh, that was uh, two years ago, three years ago. Uh, then we did, uh, but we did, like we always end up having like, I think the, the longest time we spent together on each other was uh, for studio time as well. Cause we ended up spending, you know, quite a lot of time in the studio. Um, but that tour was really fun, though. It was with, like, a, a French band uh, called Crack House, good friend of us. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's just, like, it was just, like, a nice, a uh, really nice tour. Everyone was lovely. Uh, like, still quite, quite a low-key uh, thing, uh, but we had, we had a great time. It was really, really, really easy. Yeah, that's nice. Also, that's really nice because, like, man, as an outsider, like, you know, I, I didn't really tour with – I don't tour, you know. I don't have, like, a band. But when you hear like more and more stories, it's like you romanticize it when you're on the outside. You're like, man, it's pretty cool. But it's like when you hear the start hearing the stories, like, yeah, we toured with this tour package, hated every band. It was great. We all just kind of set like almost like the band where you guys just like don't talk to each other. It's like, yeah. all right. And then you hear more about like, like maybe labels have more say in your songs than you kind of realize. Like you think like pop music. Yeah. Like, like you said with like Beyonce, it's like it's a different writing style. Sometimes you have a team of writers writing the music and these people just perform. It's like, I remember like some of the, my favorite songs were created by like, I was like one, one band this this song I love was, he's like, yeah, we hate that song. I always wonder why they never play it live. And like, yeah, that was like the song that the label kind of helped create. I was like, oh, that makes me sad. Like, just like thinking it's like, but maybe it's a good song. Yeah, yeah. It's a good song. But I'm like, yeah. oh, like, cause I just like, I hate the idea of people making things they don't like because it's like, well, not to get all hippy dippy, you know, it's art. <laughs> you guys are making art. It would be kind of stupid if you guys aren't making like burgers, you know, like McDonald's burgers. You guys are creating like gourmet fucking burgers here, you know, like. Yeah, you don't want someone to tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah, it's just like, I'm like, damn, especially because I'm on the outside. I never like had it myself. Like, here's a song, mister. It's like, nah, rewrite this shit. I'm like, oh, I never had to do that. I can't <laughs> imagine. <laughs> yeah, but we wouldn't walk with people who wanted yeah. that to happen. But uh, that's it. If you offered an album and the album was quite bad and they would come back and say oh, i'm not sure about this album i think i would know i'll be the first one to not you yeah. know the band anyway us as a, as a collective we probably would be wouldn't be even put it on the table you know yeah and that's what is kind of cool with your team like you said like because of your team or the way you guys like do it yourselves you guys kind of almost defend yourselves a little bit from a yeah. lot of that stuff i guess i guess there's a lot of buffering internal buffering yeah. that is done in the band so it's harder to release something that's, you know, at least not to a certain standard, um, because you have to have already a, a, a group of a few people, including a producer. So I'd say that's four people essentially. Uh, they are just talking to each other and say, mm, "That's cool," and they feel comfortable about it, you know. Um, yeah. And 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 in the end, that's that's enough for us if we feel strongly about that, and like we've got a group of friends. Because sometimes you don't know as well. It's it's quite good to have like the group of people that are around you just saying. That's cool, and 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 because we're super honest and super picky about things, we also we are like cool. We feel confident about it, and so obviously some songs were like so chuffed to buy them, but some others we are like that's cool. That's a cool song. It, it works yeah. within the album. It's not basically not necessarily your favorite. Yeah, it's tough too. Like like you said, like it's personal, and also when you focus so much on one thing, you just get so dug into the hole. You might not even realize anything about it. You come out, you're like. Man, that thing's different than I thought, man. I spent like uh, two weeks on this song. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes, two time, what happens is that uh, we start writing something, and then I've got something in my head. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be the song of the album, and then uh, you get surprised by all the stuff, and and that's cool. And the song that you actually thought would be this big track end up being all right, uh, but not your favorite. I guess, it, I guess it's expectations as well. Sometimes I yeah, put a lot yeah. of expectations into a song and i'm like ah oh, actually you know you can only uh go down from there i guess uh 
But some other songs, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about these songs. And we've been arguing about it. And then we enter in the studio and we're like, oh, let's put this on top of it. And then you're like, yes, you know, that's, that's cool. <laughs> the magic piece. Uh, so we're going to bring it to another segment we, we call the uh, three random silly question segment. We ask you three random silly questions. You ready for this? Go for it. All right. Question number one. If you had to make a celebrity zombie apocalypse team, who would you recruit? A zombie apocalypse with celebrities. So I've got to make a team, a century of zombies. Yeah. Uh, well, so, I, no, your celebrity team would fight the zombies. Yeah. Ah. This is who, if you want to survive, pick well. That's all I'm saying. So it's surviving <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Right. I tell you what, is that, is, is this guy called Bear Grill? Bear, yeah, Bear Grill. Right, I'll take Bear Grill because that'd be a good man to have on. Uh, That's a good pick. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take some, uh, some UFC fighters as well. Oh, like, oh, you got all about that. You got any? You got any? You want John Jones, probably. Yeah, like exactly. That. Just, <laughs> just get John Jones. Send him in. That's <laughs> it. Uh, and then I'll take um, some artists as well, like a few artists I like, I guess, and uh, and I'll be us, man. There you go. It's where would you guys hide out? Where do we? Where would we hide out? Mm, yeah. There's a bunker uh, near uh, Scotland on the coast. I think that would be a good spot. It's like a, oh. a, a like a nuclear bunker that they built uh, during the the Cold War, I think, and it's oh, wow. like massive. So yeah. we'll hide there. That's a good spot. Yeah, that is. Damn, that's that's you see as well, so it looks good. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a bunker. I have a stop and shop. So I don't know if it's the same thing. <laughs> it's just like, all right, there's a lot of glass stores. windows. This is not defendable. Let's put <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, you have to like you know put stuff on the wall for sure. Oh yeah, like the mist. Just stack dog food in front of the windows. Just like, don't let him in. Yeah, it's that's a tough one, dude. I always like uh because the zombie apocalypse team, I feel like people always kind of like they romanticize it as a joke. Like, oh yeah, I'd probably I'd get a Jeep, I'd fill I'd get a bunch of gas containers and some beans of some sort and go to the mountains. It's like, yeah, but what happens when those beans run out? Do you know how to hunt? Yeah, yeah. You had to like get like clean water, boil it or some shit. I don't know how to catch a squirrel. Wow. Yeah. You buy the water so you can leave with a boat if something happens and maybe fish. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah. I'm fucked, dude. If I run out of Lay's chips, like, dude, I'm like, I got this from the grocery store. It's all we got. It's like, now we got to hunt deer. How the fuck do you even hunt? <laughs> like, now I got to survive and hunt? Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> well, at least you guys have guns in the U.S. We don't have guns here, so. Fair wow. enough. Okay. Yeah. The only problem is I don't have a gun. So it's actually worse for me because now I'm fighting people <laughs> with guns. guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now it's like. Guns. So now, as the whitest man in the world, I got to, like, crawl, bear crawl on the ground in the moonlight. You can just see the reflection off my cheek as I'm trying to take the guns away. It's not a good move. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> that's why I don't want this to happen. I'm like, I don't think I'm surviving. These people are like, yeah, I'd survive. You have no skills. How I think this survive? might be the first time <laughs> where someone didn't mention The Rock. Usually when we ask this question, someone brings The Rock up. Dwayne Johnson as part of their crew. The Rock is just the bodybuilder, man. Yeah, it's a great wrestler and stuff like that, but he's not a fighter, you know. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. that's why it actually makes sense. You brought up the UFC fighter; at least they know yeah, how to do awesome. something. Yeah, they're prepared. Uh, question number two: um, <laughs> What's something that you would like to remove from your daily routine? Oh, um, my day-to-day -day job. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I hope nobody at my work is listening to this. But no, I, I, it's all right. I work from home and stuff. But I do, I do like. I work three days a week. I used to work full time, but now I only work three days a week because uh, I can spend more time with the band, which is cool. So I shouldn't oh, be yeah. complaining about this. But yeah, it'll be there, though. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, it's fair. No, I hear fair you. No, no one wants to go to their jobs anymore, no, no. especially when you uh, work from home. It's kind of like you're usually you look forward to going home when you're at your job, and now when you're at home all day, you're kind of like, all right, I want to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, like right now, yeah, I got kind of, I got furloughed, but at the beginning of COVID, when I was working from home. I thought it would be the dream and I actually still probably would rather work from home, but yeah, I just kind of like focus in, not that I'm like a hard worker, but I just kind of focus and I get lost and it's hard to do that at home when you just hit the off button. Cause you kind of feel lazy. It's like, well, the computer's right there. I could still yeah. work. <laughs> like, it's just like when you leave the office, you're like, Oh, well, I can't do it. I'm at home. It's like, well, all the work could be done right here. It's like, are you mm -hmm. really going to stop eight hours? That's it. It's like, <laughs> I could work 12, I guess. This <laughs> is like, yeah, gets scary. Final question: um, What was the strangest fan request you've gotten? 
Um, let me think about this one. one if you one. can't think of a request, maybe like your like a fun fa a fan story or something you want to share. All right, well, I've got I've got a, I've got a funny one. Uh, I played a show once in uh, we played a show once in Leeds, and it's for a song called Sunset Grace, which is like an instrumental song, and it's like a weird tuning. I have to pick up another guitar and stuff like that, and my arm just was fucking up so i just wasn't having the best night and stuff so i had to use someone else amp and stuff like that and the sound wasn't great so anyway i was moaning about it because i wasn't having a good night and um we play that song and there's a, a a very recognizable solo if you if you lead if you listen like a lead kind of thing if you if you know the track and uh, uh the room was like half empty it was like that kind of show which was like not a good show at all so anyway like on on a monday night kind of thing and uh yeah I end up playing the solo and the guy comes at the end of the show and says, oh, that, that song you played, uh, Sunset Grace, that, that was really great. So shame you fucked up the solo. <laughs> <laughs> With all the bands there. I was like, all right, chill, man. <laughs> a compliment and you think it's a compliment, but actually, you know, it's a punchline. It was good. Oh, my God. What oh, a fucking man. guy. That is that's great. <laughs> I forgot where in Europe. I forgot where it is, but some bands say it's like, yeah, they don't let up. You go there, they'll like they'll walk up to you. Yeah, I love you, man. You suck tonight, though. That's uh, like it's just like, what the Honest, hell? It's, brutal honesty. I don't know if it was sweet. It was somewhere. I forgot where in Europe. I got. I wish I remember, but it was just funny. They're like, yeah, man. If you fuck up there, all your fans will come up to you and be like, yeah, they'll tell you that. you suck. It's like I love you, bro. Not tonight, though. It's like, damn it, stop hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's it's cool. Though. I I quite like that about Europe. The fact that you go with one country and then you're just like. Completely different culture, completely oh, yeah. different people, and and the way they react to your music and the way they interact with you is completely different. Where well, do you guys get really like? Pardon? I was gonna say, where do you guys get the best reaction? What um, country? Well, if you like, honestly, uh, uh, this has been changing depending on the on the night, but. Like uh, Germany has been good to us. Uh, France has been good to us. Uh, the UK has been good to us. Uh, Norway has been good to us. Holland has been good to us. But they all like doing it in different way. I have to say the French crew for me is like fun because I, you know, it's like it's good Hometown. to go back home. And yeah. uh, people, people have um, in France anyway. They, the way they, uh, it's maybe because I'm French and because I feel like uh, I've got a good uh, maybe because I react and understand more what's going on, but. Uh, there's a lot of uh, associations in France that are putting shows together, but not for money. And they get, you know, they get a bit of money from the state uh, to help pushing those, those events. So they usually have a very good organization for um, people who are putting like normal, like all size yeah. band to smaller as well. And you end up getting well paid and the, the hospitality is amazing. All over Europe, it's great, except the UK. Uh, that's in the UK. They need to sell their shit together for the food. But if, if you, you, go, you go anywhere in uh, in Europe, man, and they, they wait for you. There is food. There is uh, no one's going to tell you to buy a drink. Uh, everyone, I feel like it's a celebration of your music. You know, you just go oh, there and people awesome. are like, yeah. you know, they are happy to have you and they are happy to uh, 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 to be working with you. And and they're gonna they're gonna try to make things as easy as possible for you. And and I love that. I absolutely love that about Europe. Um, That's really cool. I actually yeah. have like one random question about France and the metal scene there and stuff like that. What? So my my ex girlfriend said that they didn't call mosh pits mosh pits there; they called it pogo. Ah, c'est vrai. Uh, sorry, it's 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 true. Yes, it it's is correct. Um, pogo. I yeah, sure she's uh, like serious or not messing with me. So it's called pogo instead. Uh, but people will know in the metal scene what. Uh, uh, moshing is uh so the, because they'll see those american bands and say i want to see a, a circle pit or a mosh or whatever they would call it but uh if you are going back like uh, a few years back like the the, the ancients uh, punks and the uh, like old <laughs> old school hair metal guys uh they will they will talk about uh, pogo yeah uh and when when i was a kid it was called a pogo so oh, i've been to a show and people were pogoting that's, that's what they would say pogote ah okay uh, cool. no, no, it, it is a, it's a real, real world well done that's yeah. cool. That's awesome. I, for some reason, I was like, I feel like she's messing with me like this whole time. No, no, no. That's yeah. that's only possible. That yeah, I, that's cool, man. Thank you for clearing that, uh, clearing that up. That, that's a something. If you don't travel, you just get lied to. It's like this is what they do in Sweden. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> it's just like I don't. I can't yeah, prove you wrong. Canada. <laughs> that's it. Only Canada for me. Yeah, I got. I always, I always thought it was interesting. Like you brought up about Europe. Like it isn't crazy. Like you do have a little bit different culture among the states. 
but it's just not drastic enough where you're like, dude, this is a different fucking world. What? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, excuse me? It's you like, you go like, uh, like that's what I was saying. Like when we went to the Netherlands, the first time we played in the Netherlands, uh, it was like a show, and we we're on this big, 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 like not big, big, big venue. It was like a, a 500 capacity, 600 capacity venue, uh, which on that tour we were more playing like you know 200 caps kind of things. Yeah. And uh, okay. we we're right there, and we we're like Sunday night, we thought it would be dead, and like literally just like five minutes before the show starts, people everywhere and it was like you know, those kind of thing and in the same story you start playing and, and you're like hmm they don't really move too much uh but then at the end of the show you send sell ton, tons of merch and then they go and talk to you at the end and say oh that was really great uh, i remember I, I got off stage on that show um and the, and uh, i was like yeah that's finished they're not asking for an encore you know so i was just like that's that's all uh night of work done so i was about to go and and get to the merch table so i can sell stuff you know help the, the merch guy to sell stuff and uh, people are grabbing me and they're like, no, 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 uh, do another song. And uh, and I'm like kind of looking at the rest of the band. The rest of the band is looking at us. We are like, oh, okay, let's go. And uh, <laughs> they just they just don't show it as much as uh, you would, for instance, in, in, in France or uh, um, in the Latin country, you know, Southern in uh, in like um, like Spain and Italy. We've never been, yeah. to but people are a bit more de- demonstrative there, I guess. Yeah, uh, that's okay. what, that's interesting. Yeah, that's also something like I just don't again don't see because like you know it's kind of like United States. It's all almost like the same, just like different, a little slightly different. But like when you hear like bands like talk about Japan, well they'll just clap and they'll not make a sound, but the second the song starts, they'll start moshing. Yeah, they're just, they're just like in between every song, they're like, "What the fuck?" Hello, yeah. I remember like what was it? Meshuga did that terrible joke. It's like what the what's the difference between this uh, crowd and a church? Nothing. It's really quiet. All right, this is the next song. I was like, that's the worst <laughs> joke ever. <laughs> but then the crowd explodes. They probably, they probably don't even speak English for half of them. So yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But I think I, Sl- I think Slayer had that that story. It was like, yeah, we went to go play and it was just all seats. And everybody was sit there just nodding and all happy. And the second we hit the song, they all got up and ran to the stage. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then after the Not first song, they just clapped. It. I was like, that's kind of nutty. Like that must be like as a band like must be hard to deal with like you said like you go to like the netherlands and all of a sudden it's like all right you know you get applause you don't get uh you don't get like head banging or singing along you just get applause breaks i've been to shows like that where it's like no one's moving but then everyone loses their fucking mind after i'm like i'm like oh i guess everyone liked it all right that's kind of i'm 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 used like i have to say um the the gigs i tend to go to tends to be gigs where uh, uh it's like it'll be like Yob or you know in Tarma or like these kind of things I would go and see those bands and uh, and um, people don't really go mental and and uh, uh, mosh pits and stuff like that they tend to be like more like receptive and like uh, 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 like you know kind of absorbing the music yeah and like uh, and I get more? that yeah like you're more like you know like kind of watching and being uh, like really watching what's going on and try to soak soak stuff in because it's a uh, music that is is a little bit more uh, uh, either complex or it's not like you know instant like you move a bit and stuff but it's not it's not just about uh, uh something that's catchy and easy to listen to you know so yeah. so i get that and uh i have to say our music is like that too so it's not like we go to a gig and people are like uh, uh moshing around and stuff it's not it's not good violence yeah <laughs> exactly exactly so well, so i don't mean that i think the stuff is just something you have to uh to uh, adapt to different cultures or at least uh, uh expect different type of reactions you know yeah, course. also good though for post COVID because we don't know when shows will come back. And you really don't know. But if yeah. shows come back and it's like limited capacity and stuff and they try to split people apart, metal's not going to have a good time of it because you know, it's just like people are just going to want to move. And it's just like if you're a band where your crowd likes to chill and watch you, I feel like you can get away with that. Where like if you're a hardcore band and you're like, yeah, can we s- stay apart? It's like, no, it's not going to happen. They're going to start and violence will rain upon the room. It's like, yeah, no, they're not staying apart. It's like... They, they know they know for a fact that the moment they reopen shows, uh, they, they won't be able to control anything. Yeah, It's just going to happen. Uh, and I think that's why they are waiting so long for putting shows back together. Unless you're doing like things like uh, classical music, theaters, and stuff like that, you're just going to... You're not going to be able to separate people. That's impossible. Yeah, I, I know places like... Yeah. I mean, Australia, I heard, was opening up a little bit. Uh, Switzerland, I heard, had one or two shows. How is the scene by you? Is anything open? Can bands play? Dead. It's completely dead right now. Uh, nothing is going on. 
Um, it's like that over most most of Europe at the moment. Uh, France French festivals are, are most con mostly cancelled until like like you know until this. The, it's interesting. The state said uh, until uh, August August uh, maybe September. Um, we are meant to go on tour in Europe in uh, in September end of September. So um, let's you know touching wood. See what yeah, happens. But no, no, it's it's painful. Like uh, it it is painful. Um, what's what's harder as well, I think, in uh, in in the UK especially, is uh, the the state is not help as helpful as uh, like the French state or the German state, where uh, they tend to help uh, musicians quite a lot, and not only yeah. musicians, venues especially. So a lot mm -hmm. of our venues are uh, quite a few venues are like not going to reopen. I don't think. Uh, and yeah. and you're having this thing that in the UK that that really sucks, which is uh, a lot of um, venues get closed because they build like a, a building next to them or offices, and and these places are complaining for noise and stuff like that. So like they're kind of slowly turning cities into bi like business centers, I guess. Like you know, just place where you've got guys with suits uh, doing doing things. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's not it's not great. So. I, I hope um, I hope uh, things turns around after COVID, you know, uh, because uh, there'll be a real shame. There's a, there's a very vibrant scene uh, all over Europe uh, and in the UK as well. Uh, I just think uh, it's kind of sometimes left a little bit uh, to rot. Yeah, I just hope people aren't surprised. You know, if you're not going to help, like states or like government are not going to help, and like people like because I hear sometimes people don't care. They're like, well, it's just like you're playing music. It's like. Yeah, but if you care about art or you care about the songs you're listening to, don't be surprised when they're not here, when you don't care about it. More importantly, I think yeah, people like, tend to forget the most important part about music in general. It's it's what makes a, a city uh, breathe and, and art in yeah. general. The, the reason people, I mean, we all work, but what do we work for? We work for, uh, our, of course, our families and, and house and stuff like that. But that's, these days, it tends to be all right. You know, we don't have as many people dying from food and stuff. So what do people do? It's entertainment. It's like, it's mostly on entertainment. And for a lot of people, entertainment is music and, and all these kind of things. So um, unfortunately, you can say what, whatever you want about music and it's big, not productive, great. But that's that's probably what you are looking for well, the most in your day, you know, like those activities yeah. are bringing people together and stuff. So I'm like, cool. That thing is just a very... Uh, uh, short-sighted uh vision of of things yeah that's it, it always blows my mind because that's why i always have a problem with uh oops, yeah that's always have a problem with people like when they uh like i had friends like back when pirating first started and they would complain about like buy, like dude why are you buying it just download them like well i want my band to be around i, I didn't really have a bands. job back then so if i had any kind of dollar i would you know i would try to buy a cd or something and it's just like, well, I want you to be around. I don't want to be surprised if like Dune goes away. It's like, well, you never bought a Dune CD. It's like, you're right. Yeah, I didn't support you guys. It's just like, it's like you guys support people that you like. That's how you keep people around. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just like that's what. Sure, is. buy merch, buy something if you go yeah. if you go to their show or you know, I um I'm, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, Victor, before we let you go, um, Etiman Anka comes out March 19th, Metal Blade Records. Um, is there anything that you guys are doing for this? Maybe like another live stream event or maybe live show, video, anything upcoming? Yeah, we're working on the live station. Uh, but that's, again, so because I've, I've told you the part of our crew for filming is in France. They're just guys we know. Uh, they're good, uh, great. So we want to work with them. Um, so we're going to have to wait a little bit for that because um, the borders are closed right now. Uh, so it's yeah. really difficult for people to come. So we want to shoot in April. We're going to shoot in May. Uh, we're in no rush, uh, you know, because COVID time. So we don't have yeah. to uh, necessarily like uh, jump into uh, into anything. We we'll we'll let people like, you know, absorb the, the album. And then we'll offer a, a live session, uh, which will be like something we want, like something that's going to look cool and sound cool. And then outside that, we planning to tour in September in Europe, um, uh, all over Europe for like three, four weeks. And then uh, we've got another show in December with another British band. I'm not allowed to say who they are yet, but uh, that will be revealed uh, uh, in, in due time. <laughs> awesome. Can't wait, man. That sounds exciting. But uh, just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this. I know the time difference can be a little wacky, but thank you so much, man. I really appreciate no it. No worries. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, dude. Uh, Until next I'll... time, man. Have a good hey, one. Man. Until Be next safe. Time. Thank you. Bye, guys. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now.
your boy Chris. We got Jesse. What's up, dude? What's up, doggy? All right. Hope you guys enjoyed Victor from Dune. It's not Dune. divine, as some people might think, just because Divine. there's a Dune. Divine. 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 Well, I mean, if, if you're looking at the the band name, right, D V N E, if like it kind of makes it sound like divine in a way. If you're, you know, like you ever do those like those tests where they take out all the vowels, yeah, you just have the words and like you still know the words. What's a vowel? <laughs> all right, continue. <laughs> anyway, vowel? Dune Victor is really cool, very uh, very open with us. He actually really got. I feel like he opened up about like not just the music, the writing, and all that, but also like. All this stuff about the band members and the scene there and how they manage. And I feel like I got a real inside look into Dune. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Uh, he was he seemed really, really cool guy. And uh, yeah, it's just always cool to like uh, kind of mention it, you know, big fans of music, but we we're not in a band. You know, we don't we never took part in even the low level of like going to like getting friends and like putting on local shows. So when you hear more and more about the behind the scenes and just how people work and how bands work and it's always cool. It's always an honor. Like there's no fucking reason. He just tells some chud from freaking New Jersey. Like there's no reason. And you know, he comes cool. and talks to us. It's cool. It was also cool that he was able to like, he actually took our opinions for like Coheed. You know, he actually wanted to like your recommendations. Yeah. I hope like, he, he likes it. <laughs> uh, and if he doesn't like it, we won't invite him back. <laughs> well, we'll ask but, uh, him, Hey man, what'd you think of Coheed? Hated him. Just <laughs> never answer. Just leave him on red. Leave the text on red. <laughs> well, I just want to drop their brand new album coming out. It's Etiman Eka. Uh, it's a prequel to their other album, Asheron. Comes out March 19th through Metal Blade Records. And if you guys want a little taste of the new record, they have some new tracks out, especially their Omega EP, which is basically like 20 minutes of music. If you're a fan, if you haven't listened before and you just want to get a taste of the I would say the biggest is like Paul Bearer and Mastodon. And he even said Baroness. Boom. No, wrong side screen. I was about to say, that's Kill Switch Engage. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Yeah, I love that too. I love Kill Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, with the bands he listed, I was like, makes complete fucking sense. The second he listed all the music, he's like, yeah, this is what got me into metal. And I'm like, this band is loaded with riffs too. So, uh, if you want to stop listening to us and listen to them, I won't be upset, but make sure you like and subscribe, follow, do all that good stuff I before would. you leave us. <laughs> Dune. Um, yeah, and make sure you check them out. They're, they're, all their stuff is on Metal Blade Records, uh, the, like the webpage, I would say, if you want. They have a lot of uh, limited edition vinyls, so if you're into that, they have that. They have a lot of good merch there, but Jesse, he does reactions, and you know what? He's called Insid. No, he's not called Jesse. He's called Insid. Tell us more about that, Jess. Yeah, uh, I I listen to music. I do this. Nice. That's kind of what my whole reaction is. It's just it's just that. No, it's a, it's pretty cool. I got I get to listen to music. Uh, kind of trying to recalibrate a little bit with it because uh, I tried to do this like uh before the new year. I wanted to clear out. I have a queue, and I wanted to clear the whole queue of songs. But then I found I was losing subscribers because apparently people don't like getting bombarded with notifications that i released like i had to release 12 videos a day so i did wow. two days of that and i lost like eight subscribers it's like so yeah that's the opposite i want to happen i probably should stop that so i stopped doing that and i remember some people were like why the hell did you just stop doing that and i was just like uh because i was losing subscribers so this is like that's the opposite yeah. of what i want so uh yeah no i'm gonna get back to it i'm gonna be putting out you check out youtube.com slash c slash instant one I'm still blown away. I remember that. I feel like I should always forget that C. I feel like the C I would always forget. Yep. But yeah, check it out. I'll be releasing some stuff and yeah, just just hang out, man. But more importantly, check out the boy over here, the Metal Teddy Bear Experience on YouTube. Yeah. Doesn't uh, just do the podcast, right? Yeah. I mean, me and my boy Ron, we do the radio show WMSC 90.3 FM. Yeah. You can hear us every Tuesday night, 7 to 10 p.m. So. Ugh. There, I play a lot of music. Uh, I play like basically all the new metal things that you would want to listen to, like Dune. And um, me and Aram talk about movies. Sometimes we talk about TV shows. We usually have like a you like you always talk about Star Wars because that's always happening. Same thing with Marvel. But uh, remember, I have a lot of music on there too, and I actually have interviews. So that's a it's a jam packed show. There's a lot going on there. So new music, 
topics of conversation and band interviews. <sighs> I recently had George Lynch on, and it's a lot of fun. So remember, Tuesday nights, 7 to 10. I'll stop talking, guys. Thank we you. also have a backlog, too, on his YouTube. So if you want to check out all those interviews, they're yeah, all there. I've been doing it for a while. It's all there. So if you subscribe, you can check out all the videos. I think I have like 100 or something. I'm not too sure. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. It was a pleasure. Um, great to be back. And until next time, my friends, keep it real. Thank <laughs> you.